So James, can you show me how to make a rig up now? Yeah, sure. What I'll do, Trev, is um, I'll actually make up a dibber rig that we're going to use today. Okay. So I'll take you through how to actually construct the rig. And we'll also set up one of the ready-made rigs, in this case, the commercial pellet rig. Okay, fine. So, first thing we've got to start with is the line. Now, line for pole fishing, um, the best suited line is some of the pre-stretched monos that are available, like this XWR from Berkeley. Now, the line itself is very, very thin for its given breaking strain. Okay. So, you don't have to, but I think it's a good advantage to use a high-tech pre-stretched mono when you're constructing the rig. Okay, and, and the, the pre-stretch, so you've got less give in it. There's um, less give in it, which helps to reduce the diameter of the line. Okay. But remember, when you're using it in conjunction with an elastic, a shock absorber, you don't need the stretch as much as you do so the, when you're fishing with a rod and line. Yeah, so the elastic is doing the work. Yeah. So lines like this are particularly suited to pole fishing. One thing to mention is the diameter of the line I'm using. I think we're going to start with an 016 millimeter rig line. Okay, I think that's going to be strong enough and robust enough for the fish that we're catching without going too heavy. Um, but it's also going to mean that we can use a lighter hook length and change the hook length dictating to the bait and the fish and that the we're going to catch. We're catch. So okay. you say an, an 016, yeah. roughly what sort of breaking strain would that well, be? Well, for this line, that an 016 millimetre breaks around about six pounds. Okay. So it's a really strong line, yeah. but relate that to six pound standard mono and you can see that it's probably oh, it's half right. the yeah. diameter. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a loop on the top of the rig. This is what's going to be attached to the connector, okay? So I use the figure of eight loop, keep it nice and neat and wet it to ensure the maximum knot strength. So there's the loop. And I'm actually going to attach it to the pole. So we're using the elastic connector we talked okay. about. And as we're using the top two sections of the pole of this power top, I'm going to make the line the same length as the pole, the top two. Now I don't know how deep the peg is yet, we'll have to plumb up and we'll talk about that when we get okay. set up, but I'm fairly sure that it's not going to be deeper than that. Obviously if the peg was deeper than the top two, I'd have to use a third section, section. to allow for the greater depth. So there we go. The next thing to do is to add the float. In this case, as I mentioned, it's this dibber float. So it's just quite simple. You'll notice that there's a, a eye fixed into the top of the float. So we thread the line through that eye. And then we need to add some silicon tubing. The silicon tubing is going to trap the line against the pole stem, stem, pole float stem. In this case, it's a carbon stem. So I need to use a fairly thick silicon section of silicon tubing. And what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to attach the silicon tubing, but you want to achieve, it wants to be fitting, but it wants to be nice and tight, okay. as you can see there. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut three different sections around about half a centimetre each. Actually, for the bottom one, I'm going to leave it a bit longer, around about three centimetres. I'll explain why in a second. So I've cut the three different sections of the tubing and then I'm just going to simply thread the tubing onto the line. There's one. There's two. And then finally, the last one, three. Now you might say, why don't you just use one? Well, one thing to think about when you're pole fishing, particularly on lakes like this, is you want to maximise the strength of the rig as much as possible. And also you want to make it neat. So by using three rubbers, position one, just at the base of the float there where it joins the stem, another one in the middle, means that I've got 
the line is Tight. nice and neat against the stem. And the final one, the reason I left it longer was so that I'm actually going to have an overhang of the rubber at the bottom, as you can see. And, and, and the overhang is for? Well, it helps prevent tangles. You'll find that if you use a shorter section, the rubber will actually move up the float and you've got the stem protruding. And that can, when the, when the float uh, flips over, sometimes it catches. So that'll mean that you've got a very nice, neat, strong and tangle-free setup. If one of these rubbers was to break, you've still got another one on there yeah. to, to keep your fishing. So that's why I use three on a dibber like this. So we've attached the float. Next thing to do is to attach the shot. And in this case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to use number eight split shots, OK? And, and, and I take it you, you look at the, the shot loading on the float yeah. to know how many shots to put on. Exactly, yeah. And I know this is um, a 0.3 float, and I reckon it's going to probably take about four or five number eight shots. I'm just going to put four on now, and then we can adjust it when we're actually fishing, because you want to fine-tune the rig so that you've got the absolute maximum sensitivity okay, as you out said of the earlier. float. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm applying the shot, and I like to apply them all in the same place at the bottom of the line, because every time you pinch the shot on, you are damaging that little section of line. So what I do is I attach them all at the bottom, then gently slide them up. So we've attached four number eights now. And the section where I've pinch the shot on, I actually discard that. Right, so you've got nothing that's damaged there, but you've got the four shots. Yeah, shot and I've got the shot on, place. and they're all nicely positioned on the line where I can move them easily without damaging the line. Excellent. So quite simply, I've got my float on the line. I've got four number eight shots. Okay, and then all we need to do now is to add the hook length. Okay. And we're going to use a loop-to-loop -loop connection. So that means I need to tie a small loop in the bottom of the rig, same as at the top, which is a figure of eight loop knot. OK. And then I'm going to use a pre-tied hook length. In this case, I'm going to use 0.0148 millimeter. So that's lower in diameter than the main line. And that breaks around about four pounds. So I've got a six pound main line and a four pound hook length. And we're using a size 16 B911 hook. And this is barbless. And that's okay. an important consideration to think about when you're fishing on a lake, because many lakes stipulate that you have to use barbless hooks. Okay. But it, I, I presume it's a strong hook and we're using a lighter breaking strain. So if I mess up yeah. and all else fails, we don't break off. Well, if you pull. snag up on the bottom yeah. or if you hook a big fish, that you're going to lose, you know, because it's it's taken off. You're only going to lose the hook length rather That's than the whole rig. The rig. That's the yeah. idea of using a hook yeah. length. So just very simply, you can see the hook length comes off in a loop like this. It's already got a loop tied on the end of the line. And what I simply do is I just hold the loop of hook length like that between two fingers, take the hook, and just gently unravel the whole hook length. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got the loop to loop, so I push the hook length loop over the main line loop and then simply place the hook back through the main rig loop and there you go. So that's a very, very quick and efficient way of attaching your hook length. Another nice thing about doing it loop to loop is that because your hook lengths are all the same length, you're actually going to be fishing the same depth sounds a bit complicated, but obviously the distance between the hook and the float is yep. the depth that you're fishing. Yeah. Okay? So when you're really catching fish and you're getting into a good rhythm, catching fish quickly, Fire. if you lose a hook or want to change your hook to a different hook, by having the hook lengths all the same, that's a very neat feature to think about because you're not adjusting the depth. I know when I put a new hook length on, I'm exactly as I was before. So there you go. That's a very simple rig. It took us no time at all and we'll actually fish with that and explain some of the different configurations of the shotting pattern, so where the shots are actually positioned on the rig to achieve different types of presentation. Well, that's the dibber rig set up and ready to go. Okay, well that was uh, completely...
comparatively simple and then you were going to say well, something when about... I want to to give us another option like we talked about yeah. setting up two top kits I'm going to set up another top kit with one of these pre-tied rigs that are available in this case this is one of our Shakespeare Mac XT rigs and it's the commercial pellet rig and you'll notice at the top that quite clearly it states the main line diameter in this case it's 0.16 so it's the same as the margin rig the hook size is a size 14 barbless and the length of the rig is 3.3 meters that's an important consideration remember we talked about matching the length of the rig to the depth of the water that you're fishing yeah. so three meters is a good starting point we might find that we need to cut that rig down to fish where we want to fish. Okay. We can yep. talk a little bit more about that when we actually get yeah. set up and start fishing. Okay, so you, you would cut the rig down to suit the depth of water and if you're using it on the top two sections, for instance. Yeah, well I'll set it up on the top two to start with, but we might have to remove some of that section of line to fish in the most efficient way possible. Okay, yep. Okay.